All right. Hi, everyone. Um, and welcome to our Friday job market mentoring session. Um, uh, we have, this is our second uh, mentoring hour out of four for the fall. So I just want to remind you to please register for the two upcoming sessions. We still have two left, how to write a cover letter and how to write a DEI statement. So go to this link and you can register for those hours. And next slide. Um, so if you are on the job market, which I assume most of you are, um, you can go to this link and check out more jobs. This is um, job boards that we've compiled here. Um, and I think that's all I wanna say on there. Just a reminder to go to our website. So this session, so it's obviously it's being recorded right now. I'm gonna go through ground rules and I'm gonna introduce our mentor. Um, and I'm, uh, and then, um, our mentor is going to give, um, her presentation and also cover some of your questions. Then we're going to end the recording and we're going to go to breakout rooms. And we got three amazing statements that have been anonymized. And we're going to, um, each breakout room is going to discuss one statement. Um, and then we're going to come back after about 15 minutes and have a whole group discussion. Okay. Next slide. This is our ground rules for breakout groups. So please reminder to please make space, take space. Uh, really try to allow time for each person to um, let their voice be heard. Take a minute to allow processing. Um, think in terms of both and thinking two things can be true at the same time. And uh, one of the most importantly is be respectful. Please don't talk over or heckle any others and no derogatory remarks. It's very important to talk about the statement, not about the author of the statement. And please only use constructive criticism. It's also good to, instead of pros and cons, to consider, to consider what the statement did well and what it could be improved. And also don't worry about micromanaging English grammar um, these are often drafts. Their grammar can always be, you know, uh, finagled. But let's just focus on big picture. How could they? How could they be? What are they doing well, and and uh, what could be improved? If there are any uh, issues or violations of these ground rules, please report immediately to me. There's my email. I'm Jen Glass, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to say that. Um, at Georgia Tech, and uh, or excuse me, private message me on Zoom. Anyone asked to stop unacceptable behavior is expected to comply immediately. Violation of the guidelines is going to result in being asked to leave. Any kind of um, um, Zoom bombing or sharing screen of inappropriate content will result in immediate ejection from Zoom. Okay, so uh, next slide, I want to introduce our amazing mentor for today, Dr. Melissa Diaz, she, her pronouns. Um, Dr. Diaz is an assistant professor of geography at University of Colorado and an INSTAR fellow. Um, and I had the pleasure of working with her on our DEI um, committee, which is actually um, organizing this, this workshop series. So she's an alumni of our committee and has come back to instill all her wisdom. So we're really happy to have her today. She did her BS at University of Rochester, PhD, MS and PhD at Ohio State, and then a postdoc at Woods Hole. From then on, she, she just uh, recently uh, got started on her assistant professorship in the last few years, right, Melissa? And, uh, yeah. and so she's just has fresh in her mind how to write this statement. Um, and there's her email. And I'm going to hand it over uh, to Melissa to tell us about her journey and suggestions. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Jen. Um, and then, Jen, can you just confirm that you can see these slides? I can, yes. Okay, great. Um, hi, welcome. Um, I'm sharing my screen, so I can't really see who's on here or how many people. Um, if you have any burning questions too, or you want me to stop real quick, obviously the goal here is for you to go to these breakout rooms and sort of think about how to write these research statements. Um, but if there's anything that you're super confused about, just maybe like raise your hand or unmute yourself um, and let me know. So as Jen said, I am currently an assistant professor at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm in the Department of Geography and at INSTAR. Um, I went on the job market in fall of 2020. So that was a super weird year. Um, everything was virtual. 
And then I'm actually leaving this position um, at the end of this semester and going back to Ohio State. So that was sort of my first experience doing all of this whole process um, in, in person. So I really wasn't sure um, how to start with this. Um, so I sort of did what I did when I was looking at research statements um, to try and apply for faculty positions. And the first thing I did as a first gen student, um, I said, what is a research statement? Um, so I found some pretty good resources online that I think would be good to just talk about. Um, and then how I've sort of taken this information that I've read online and then actually translated that to the geosciences and how we can uh, create and craft better research statements from these resources. So I know it's like bad practice to read from a slide, but um, this is from the University of Pennsylvania Career Services. And they said, a research statement is a document that summarizes your research interests, accomplishments, current research and future research conduction plans. Furthermore, it outlines how your work contributes to the field, which I think is a super broad statement, but I mean, that's essentially what your research statement is. It's, it's what you're doing and what you plan to do. Um, I like the second part. It allows applicants to present the importance and impact of their past, current, and future research to their potential future colleagues. I think this last part is particularly important, and I'll come back to that when we go and we look at my research statement um, from when I got this job uh, a few years ago. So um, I know Jen, it's like going off a little, a little, a little rogue here, um, but I guess um, for one or two people, like, what do you think the goals are for a research statement? And I think you can unmute um, and just maybe speak up. Um, but I think this is an important piece. Like, what do you think is a goal for your research statement? Um, if I, nobody else is going to speak, I can speak. Uh, so I think that the research statement, it's important to uh, highlight the your both your short, short and long-term research goals. So uh, kind of summarize what you've done so far in that field and how your, uh, what your vision for your lab is gonna be as well. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, great. Um, did we have anyone else that wanted to provide some thoughts? Okay, well, maybe you should think about this um, and something to chat about in your uh, breakout rooms. So, you know, this is this is what they've stated um, from UPenn as the goal of a research statement. Um, to walk the search committee through the evolution of your research, to highlight your accomplishments, and show where your research will be taking you next. So that's sort of, I think, in line with what Robert had just said. Um, but I actually think that this is much more of an important goal. So the purpose is actually to make a persuasive case about the importance of your completed work and the potential impact of your future trajectory. And I've read a lot of different research statements. I've been involved in a number of searches here at CU. And I think that this is, in my opinion, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they focus much more on that summary aspect and much less on this persuasive case. This the whole application job process is, is persuasive writing. You're writing statements and creating a packet that's going to convince a small group of people that you are the best person for this job. And so when you're writing your research statement, summaries are very important. You need to give them an idea of what you did. But I think the way that you frame it is most important here. Oh, sure. I think Barat has his hand named, hand raised. <laughs> um, hi, um, this is Bharat. Uh, just wondering, uh, what is the, like, how much is the intersection of the research statement with the cover letter? Yeah, so I can, I can talk a little bit about that a little bit more um, in a few slides, but just briefly now, I honestly think that every part of your application should be independent yet cohesive at the same time. So for example, you'll see in my research statement that I talked about um, teaching and I talked about mentorship of students and uh, DEI. 
And I think that your cover letter is sort of that really broad overview that should touch on all those different things. And you'll see that, I think, is it next week or in two weeks um, for the cover letter workshop? But I think that that's sort of your quick little summary piece. Your research statement is really focused on why what you did is important and why they should think that you're super cool and awesome. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so again, I promise that all these won't be just words on a slide, but uh, different components of a research statement. So as you could probably imagine, based off of the previous slides, there are three distinct parts of this. So the first part is usually focused on your past research. Um, it can include the reasons why you started on your research, why you think it's really cool or interesting, um, an explanation as to why the questions you originally asked are important. So that's coming back to the significance portion. Um, and a summary of some of the work that you did to answer some of those early questions. So this is that first part, right? It's, and I think about it as establishing like a research philosophy. Your second part, as you can imagine, is what you're doing right now. Um, so how is this research different from your previous work or how has it uh, built on that previous work? And then how has that influenced maybe what you're going to do in the future? And then lastly, it should, your last portion is what you're going to do after um, your current position. If you were to accept, made an offer and accepted this job, um, what are your plans there? And this varies very widely in terms of what type of institution you're applying to. I only apply to R1s. Um, so the research statements that I have read and crafted are really focused on this R1 structure, where what they want to see is what proposals you're going to write, where you're going to submit them, and why those proposals matter. And I think that that sort of should be your guiding format in your minds as you're writing these research statements, is really ending always on why you should care about this. So um, how is a research st statement different from a CV? This is important. I read a lot of research statements that honestly are like extended CVs, where they just basically take the format of their CV and expand upon some details there. Your CV gives an overview of your past research projects, but it does not address the details of the research that you did or your future research interests. So for example, if you share me your CV, I can read the titles of your papers or the titles of your grants. I can look those up if I want, or I can usually figure out sort of what you did from there. But what the titles of your papers don't tell me is why that's important, what exactly you did, what was your role in that project, what leadership you had there, and then how that's leading and tying into future work. So I want to just emphasize here that it's it is quite different. It's much more of a narrative and much more of a persuasive writing, whereas your CV is much more like fact based. OK, and then this is, I think, <laughs> my last like wordy slide here. Um, so your research statements, they there's a lot of latitude to address a number of different questions. Um, so you can talk about like why you're interested in a particular topic. Um, the second point, you should always emphasize everywhere. Why is your research important? Even if you work in a super niche field, there's always some broader relevance um, or some really key work that you've done, probably, that you can highlight. Um, some people might be much more technique focused, so maybe they talk about how they've developed a new or novel technique or used a prior technique in a new way. And then really thinking about how you've contributed to your field. So you've done all these research projects, you've done all this work for the past five to ten years. How has that influenced your field that you're currently in or even potentially other fields? Some people might be thinking about how their research can be applied more broadly. So for example, some folks who are engineers might talk about how there might be um, commercial partnerships um, or that this research might result in things like patents that could be important. So I think that I'll leave these questions up here and there'll, there'll be a link to this presentation so you can read through them. 
But again, the key here is to really focus on why this matters. Okay, so um, there are a few different tips here um, to write a good research statement. Um, so one is to make your research statement reader friendly. And this means making sure that you're not using a lot of jargon. You have no idea really who's going to be reading your statement other than everyone in the department is going to have access to it. So for me, that was important. I was applying to a range of departments, anywhere from environmental studies to hardcore geology programs to I'm in a geography program now. And especially for this department, there's human geographers here who study like politics, right? And I think that you have to make sure that you're, the people reading your statements are obviously very smart, but they're not niche in your field and you have to make it accessible. The other thing too is this, means that making it look nice visually, it's really hard as a reviewer to get a research statement that is just like a block of text. And so I'll talk about um, uh, page limits and such when I get to my own statement, but it's in my opinion, and this is just an opinion, I would much rather have a statement that goes a little bit over the page limit than one that squishes everything and puts the font uh, or sorry, the line spacing at one instead of 1.05 or 1.1 or whatever it is default on Word, that makes it so hard to read. And when you're reading like 40 or 50 of these statements, you need to make it so that it's very clear um, and reader friendly. Again, you want to uh, make sure that um, you are focusing on your research, obviously. Um, talking about what you did in the past, how that leads. So sort of having this long uh, 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 trajectory for your work. Um, tailoring your research statement. There was a question about this and I'll address this in a minute. Um, this is really up to you on really what you wanna do. And I have some suggestions on how to tailor that. Uh, and again, just make sure that you're being yourself in these research statements. You are on the job market. You're probably gonna read a bunch of these. Uh, you have to really stay true to your authentic self and really talk about things in the way that makes sense to you. This is the only indication at some for some jobs of uh, your personality, even that a, a department might receive, right? So this is this is what they use to help decide what makes that uh, long list um, and then eventually a short list. Okay, so this is MIT's suggestion on what you should do to build the introduction to your research statement. And uh, I, it's this classic hourglass, right? You start really broad, then you move more and more specific, then you start to, at the end of it, sort of branch out and then talk about your research vision. And I actually think that this works for things like abstracts, but I prefer if this is flipped around. So then when you talk about your research vision up front, that gives the reader, a, the first thing that they read is exactly what you want them to take away from your statement. What's your plan? What do you work on? Because if you wait until the end of your first paragraph, and maybe that introduction is, you know, 13 lines or whatever, that's, I'm going to have to try to remember that. But if I know that your research vision is the first thing that you told me, and now everything that I'm reading is in the context of this vision, it helps to maybe create that cohesiveness that we're looking for in research statements. Now, I'll go through here. Um, oh, it cut it off a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Um, so uh, this is uh, my research statement. Um, so this is the introduction that I had actually used for one of my more recent ones. So I give just this really broad overview. I talk about what my research program is focused on. I look at terrestrial, uh, aquatic, and cryosphere systems. And then here, why this is important. We need to understand the cycling of these nutrients and salts in modern systems. We want to understand how Earth systems might be perturbed with future changes in climate. Um, we want to understand how extreme environments respond to disturbance. So again, by putting this up front, it's this is the first thing that you see in my research statement. And that way, like the committee knows exactly what I'm trying to do and why it matters. So it's sort of setting up, again, that whole purpose. 
why should I be the best person for this job? This statement up here will be tailored depending on what kind of job. This one in particular was, for, they were looking for somebody who studies like impacts of climate. I wrote another intro statement for somebody who was looking at like surficial processes on earth and other planets. And so you'll change this a little bit because you should be able to, uh, if you're applying to this job, you must feel that your research fits in with the requirements of the job. And this is that point right at the front. So there's no question from the committee from the committee. This is super long. And I think the point here that I'm trying to make is that if you go through, and this is all in the slides, this is the next paragraph in my research statement, and it just says things like background. So I gave a really brief summary. I was a geochemist in a field campaign. Um, I created this habitat suitability model. And then here, I didn't go through, I didn't talk about the sites, I didn't keep talking about what specifically I did necessarily. Instead, I then go into this section here, where I said the results of my work show, and these are the contributions that I've made to the field. We've developed this novel technique. Um, this is something that we didn't know in the past. Uh, this section here has larger implications. And I cited the hell out of my CV, right? And I put the numbers of what these papers are in my CV so that when somebody goes back and they say, oh, wow, she's made a pretty significant contribution here. They can go back directly to my CV and find that this little sentence that I wrote is a direct summary of uh, that research paper. So then I end with each little research topic that I talk about with this broader significance. My work is the most in-depth geochemical char characterization of high southern latitude dry valleys to date. These findings are vital because of X, Y, and Z. And then I talked a little bit about some of the other projects that I did. I studied dust in Antarctica. My work once again showed that these winds are important. These are critical papers that now have contributed to our knowledge of these fields. These data underscore the importance of aeolian processes and biogeochemical cycles. I work in a somewhat niche area, right? The amount of folks that are looking for studies of modern dust in Antarctica, there's not that many. However, even if it's a niche spot, my I'm showing and demonstrating that my work is critical here. I don't know why all this cut off. I'm so sorry. Um, but here, um, this was pulled from when I submitted my job application um, just after, uh, just in early 2020. So I had started at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in September, and I submitted this job two months later. And so at that point, it was COVID. I hadn't really done anything. So instead, I just talked about briefly the projects that I would do. Um, and then again, thinking about the implications. This work has important implications for understanding chemical evolution of water, or, you know, this is pilot work that will serve as the basis for continued research. So now my current research as a faculty member is much more substantial, but I think the key here, if you're a new person to this field, um, is to, to just embrace that and say, I am building this foundation now. These are the projects that I'm going to work on, and this is how that's going to help lead me into my future work. And then lastly, um, so I start here by just saying, here, here are my, here's what I'm going to do in the Department of Geography. So most of these projects I actually did, you know, a few years later actually start. So instead, I talk about like particular areas. So I focus on concrete projects. I said I was going to expand research um, to talk to do this core work. Sadly, um, because of COVID, this got canceled three times and then NSF gave up on us. Um, but that's okay, right? It shows that I'm demonstrating that I thought about this. I've structured it. I'm not going to talk about 16 different things. I've picked sort of three main areas that tie directly into the projects that I have been working in or expand upon those. And I think the wording for this is key. So when I'm talking about these projects, I'm not writing a mini proposal. So I say something like, well, I'm currently collaborating on this proposal. I intend to develop future proposals on this area. And then these projects are important because. So I know that I might sound like a broken record, 
But the point here is that every time that I am talking or giving a summary, I always end with why you should care about this. So when the reviewers are going to quickly look through this, they can see the significance up front and they don't have to guess. So these are sort of my ending words here. Um, I'd say that you should really focus on your goal for your research statement. So that intro paragraph, right? I'm trying to persuade the reviewers that I was the best fit for this geography position. Um, and so I talk specifically about that. I think that it's important to have some sort of unifying theme. It can be a method, it could be a study site, study site, et cetera. Um, for me, I focused on the fact that I really look at um, salt and nutrient biogeochemistry and geochemical cycling. So that included talking about isotopes and concentrations and trends. But this was my unifying theme. So even though I did seemingly a bunch of random projects, the whole underlying theme there was that I am an aqueous geochemist. And so even though I did a whole bunch of work doing solid um, materials characterization, that is what I focused on. They can see that you did all that other stuff in your uh, CV as well. So um, emphasize areas of strength in your target department. There was a question specifically about this too that you had had raised. Um, like how much do you incorporate um, specific people or resources? I think this is up to you. I sort of err on the side of uh, uh, caution. Um, I don't personally like naming specific people. I, on the other end, think that it's kind of weird when someone has like specifically in their research statement said, I'm going to work with Dr. Diaz and we're going to do X, Y, and Z. Research is all about, or research collaborations are all about building relationships. And if I don't have a relationship with this person, it seems a little weird to me for them to so explicitly state that they we're going to do this thing that I've never even heard about. So instead, what I do is I say, there are um, scientists in the department that have strengths in this area, in nutrient cycling and the cryosphere. I hope to partner with those scientists to do this. And that way it leaves it a little bit more broad and open for a partnership. Again, that's just my preference. And for emphasizing strengths in the department, you can explicitly say, this department is really strong in this area, and here's how I can contribute to that, and then also expand that strength. And then most importantly, there are many ways to craft a great research statement. This is just one example, right, that I've gone through of mine. I've read a lot of them, and some of them start with quotes or anecdotes and or, you know, passages from even their own publications. And I think that's great. The key, though, again, is to focus on your goal and then to keep sort of your personality through this. So um, we're going to break out into breakout rooms. We have a minute. Is there anyone that has a burning question? that they want to ask before we do that? And while we do that, um, uh, Melissa, do you mind bringing back up uh, my presentation uh, from the Google Drive? And I will um, walk through how we're gonna do the uh, breakout rooms. Sure. Okay, so uh, one second here while I uh, move to uh, how to move this person. Sorry. Okay, I just had to move one person to somewhere else, so we had a little better. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay. Uh, anyway, sorry to waste time. <laughs> um. Okay, we'll figure it out. All right. So breakout rooms. Okay. Um, you're going to, um, oh yes. If you could stop the recording. Cause of course I forgot. Thank you, Josh. 